Hello everybody, I'm back with another episode of the Broad Sauce Theater. I'm Tyler Edlin and I have a special guest with me today and it's, it's uh, Fami Fauzi and he's a character artist. Hello. He's gonna, he did an awesome little character sketch for us today in real time. It was about, uh, what, it was about 80 minutes. We kind of shortened it for everybody today and we're just gonna be talking about some of the process and everything that you used to create it. So yeah, let's just jump right in. Actually, before we do that, uh, if people want to find you and follow you, you're active on uh, our station and uh, Instagram, which we'll, of course, have linked below. Yes. So, all right. Let's just get it going into this. So, all right. So you're starting out with a sketch, you know, in a traditional kind of way, like you're, you're just doing line art, right? What is, uh, how far do you usually take these? I usually take this about... 10 to 15 minutes I just trying to draw loosely as possible uh, as, as loose as possible to find any interesting gesture uh, and try to work on it further uh, sometimes I just found happy accident and I really love finding happy accident in when I'm doing sketch like this so I see you have a, a raven based samurai which is a really awesome idea how much of this idea did you have prior before going in did you like know before you were sketching it that you were going to do like this awesome little crow hood or is that something that just kind of evolved in the sketch phase well uh, in this illustrations i i've I, I thinking for a while before hmm, what i'm gonna draw uh and then there's something interesting shape come comes in my mind and I try to translate it into a sketch and this is what happens awesome. uh, yeah yeah so what are your biggest influences then in terms of like maybe it's like pop culture maybe it's in other artists what what do you like right you know what really gets your creative juices flowing uh, well I really love uh, anime uh, and manga stuff something like that uh, Japanese stuff and I also love uh, uh, Japan's culture, especially their uh, clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I just I just try to portray them, and I also love to watch uh, to see uh, uh, artists that uh, portray that better too. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So when you're working out your original composition and idea, you know, at this level, what 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 are you kind of going for? Like, do you have specific shapes in mind? Do you have is it more about the gesture? Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I usually try to get the gesture right first uh, because uh, at this point I just try to get as much as information I can uh, visualize and after that just try to uh, continue working on it further. Oh, it's kind of dousy there. Yeah, and you're using like really clean shapes with the lasso tool. Does that help block out your idea, uh, your idea quicker, or do you, are you more or less focused on the value relationships? Uh, using uh, using uh, lasso tools is very useful for me to separate uh, things and materials uh, quickly as quick as possible. Although, although I, I don't really care with the sharpness or anything like that uh, from the lasso tools. It's just it's just try to uh, separate. Uh, the value of its uh, object. Uh. So you're still working in the early phases and when you're blocking out your composition, yeah, you're more just focused with the value and the graphic reads of things, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I try to, uh, well, my mindset uh, every time I make a painting like this is usually I try to get uh, everything believable as fast as possible because mm -hmm. After that, it's just actually a matter of uh, your patience, uh, how much you want to spend your time in rendering everything, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely with your mindset on that. I, I often try to get, to, my goal is to make my image work as quick as possible, and then any other time that I have to put forward in it is just detail and kind of uh, more superficial things that will just maybe add or hopefully enhance it. But yeah, if I, I definitely like to get... Uh, the idea working really really quick in case I have to run out the door in case something happens and I just yeah. have to call it done yeah that's true because uh, when when I post something uh, in a illustration like this in uh, social media well people don't spend like one minute to five minutes just looking at the image they usually just skip oh this image is good like and then uh, going so 
I think uh, uh, it, uh, the first impression is matter. So that's why uh, I try to put everything right as long as uh, as early as possible. So uh, when I can uh, I can uh, I can stop work right there. It's just all right because this already works. The illustration already works. Yeah, that got me thinking too about this entirely other topic today with like our our culture as it currently is. Like everything is about you know quickness. It's about speed. And, and today, I think the attention span of people today is a lot lower than it was a decade or two ago. People are like, you know, we always have the phone on, we always have like TV on, we've got the the radio, the, we're always being stimulated or overstimulated in some cases by things. So it's like, I wonder when it comes to art these days, I wonder if people, I wonder if you guys out there, you'll have to let us know in the comments, do you spend, how, you know, how often you spend looking at particular pieces of work? Do you just dive in and, because I'm definitely guilty of what you described. It's like, I'll find an image like this, you will, you will capture my attention. You will make me fall in love with it purely at that, that, uh, thumbnail view and i'm like yep i'll look at it like that's great and i'm gonna save it to pinterest or i'll put it on a folder and but like i don't often as find myself spending more and more time looking at images i, I like i think even 10 years ago i used to look at them a lot longer and be more articulate with it i don't know how, how are you with these things well i do believe that people yeah just getting uh, shorter and shorter in time of uh, attention uh, yeah i don't know what happened with that because uh, yeah. I usually I usually doing that too. Smartphones, uh, sometimes... <laughs> smartphones happen to it. People have internet and videos everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smartphone because uh, I think uh, I don't know uh, how to answer this, but uh, uh, that's why I try to make illustration uh, as impactful as possible. So when people just seeing it, uh, they just uh, they they leave uh, an impression when. Uh, when they scroll down my uh, into in in their timeline, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I I say almost too much too. It's like it, you really and I teach my design classes that way. If you're working on a on t a finished image or something even close to that, you really do have to sell it you know, at that thumbnail view because people more and more today, and not just because like a good thumbnail is a good read, but like people are art directors, anybody could be looking at these images, chances are it's just from the screen of a phone. Yeah, and that's it's right. it's going to be right. very, very small, so it has to look good, very, very small, above all. Yes, that's right, that's right. Uh, because uh, sometimes I found it uh, kind of tricky too when I see this image, oh, it's good, and then I like, when I scrolling back, uh, what? I think this 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 uh, composition kind of weird, but I don't know. It's kind of good at at first sight, so I I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I and I definitely think that's a huge um, benefit. I, well, the other benefit to doing that too is that you will you can get that that view, or you can get a new follower. You can build that audience. Uh, by you know by luring people into your uh, you know your <laughs> online gallery by having really strong thumbnails so there there's yeah. multiple benefits of course from that is what I was trying yeah, to say if, if you see uh, Instagram feed too uh, if you put uh, uh, Instagram feed is actually nine uh, three three rows right something like that uh, if it good if it read goods I think uh, most people will gonna follow your works too because there's kind of uh, rhyme uh, rhyme in term of thumbnail in your uh, Instagram so it's, it's also happened in art station it's also art station put a lot of uh, thumbnail something like that if you put the right uh, if the if the thumbnail is right and it's rhyme with all the art station I think it's just plus it's just a uh, good points I think for for art station gallery something like that <laughs> So with, with with this, you have a very kind of distinctive and specific style and you know technique to your to your characters, and I think that makes it awesome and definitely pretty unique to you. How how did you go about develop or finding your style in terms of your your shapes that you apply to your characters? Is it something you built up over years? Did you look at something and be like, hey, I'm going to try to draw like this? How how did this come about? Well, it's just matter of how I see how I get inspired by a lot of artists uh, and uh, all I all I all things I do is just uh, when I see an artist good at 
some particular points uh, so for instance like their color i try to imitate their uh, coloring style and uh, if i see they're good at rendering hair for for example i try to see if it's if i try to steal quote unquote steal their uh, technique if it works in my illustration if not uh, usually it's yeah <laughs> it's works for another things too in illustration yeah. <clears throat> So that's how I so that's how I build my style uh, uh, by seeing uh, get inspired from a lot of people. Yeah. How how many years do you think it, it's been you know building up towards at this point then and, and evolving? Uh, uh, I realized that in my early years in my digital painting, I really have no sense of directions where I'm going with my uh, skill. But I think in two thousand and five and two thousand and six, I start to get to get uh, to get understand myself of oh, I think this is what I good and and uh, my my uh, my friends and some uh, followers on my social media also say that too. You have interesting style, so I just work on it further. Yeah, I I think a lot of people style is not something always directly achieve in a short amount of time or even immediately intentional, but it often becomes, uh, you know, like the, the, the sum of many things, including all of our flaws, all of our influences, all of our past teachers. And it, it shouldn't be overly forced, I think, you know, is how yeah. I tr generally try to, you know, tell students this. Is, is Do you feel similarly or... Uh, in terms of forcing style, yeah, because like yeah. some people like like ah, oh, I love the manga stuff, but they're or they like too much realism. They try to force too much of the opposite thing, and I I see it like kind of come out in some people's work where it just feels very unnatural. Uh, well, actually, I have experience with at the point at some point I really copying uh, someone's art. I mean, someone's art style, and I feel like I'm not being special anymore because it's it's because when i post something it's oh your works looks like this artist mm -hmm. uh, although although it's it's kind of uh, compliment but yeah deep in my mind uh, i don't want to get too uh i don't want to become copy of that artist so yeah so yeah uh by uh expanding your i mean being open mind uh by expanding your uh style influence is uh, it's very very good uh, exper uh, exper uh, very good way to define your styles further even sometimes if they if you don't like their uh, figure maybe you like something from uh, from their part like a uh, color composition something like that and try to apply it in your illustration mm -hmm. it takes time it takes time but <clears throat> when you try when you do it over and over and over and it becomes your habit and it's become your uh, uh, installed in your uh, muscle memory and you just do something like that yeah and so, that's that style yeah I've noticed you you applied a bit of a blur to the background now which already had a really nice graphic read and shapes to it in terms of like the value and the, the pattern and the rhythm but how do you personally go about balancing your background so they're never quite distracting you know from the character uh I'm use, uh, I usually use, uh, if I'm not uh, blurring the background, I usually try to uh, uh, increase the saturation, uh, increase the highlight, uh, the light, the light of the background color. Mm -hmm. So my my only goal is making it uh, contrast and it's readable in a thumbnail. So yeah, so blurring the background is only one way to make a contrast of my illustration. Yeah, I, I agree, I, and I've seen it work both ways since there's no rules to these things. Like, I like if you if you have all your color, like in this case you do, you have your color popping on the character, then I generally find muting or having the background color and tone be a lot more subtle works really good. Well, in opposite way, if you have like a splash color in the background, like a big, you know, like <laughs> if the background's purely saturated orange or yellow, then having a dull muted character color actually really works well against yeah. that so i think as long as you're playing up in terms of elements of contrast it always works out yes yes i i usually try to uh make uh, contrast uh, as simple as possible because if you can see uh, this is a sharp sharp image between blur 
mm-hmm. uh, and also colorful between a dull image so i think that's just simple way to make contrast but uh, try to not to overstate overdoing it but sometimes it's just getting messy <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. like you have a lot of nice depth of field effects going on to to you know you're using the contrast of hard shapes that's bringing that out. Of course, the pop of the the hair color is absolutely wild. I love it. Thank um, you. So yeah, that's I a also, really cool idea. Yeah, I also add lines, something like that. It's it's mm-hmm. just to add to add interesting noise, but also in sense of direction. So, uh, so it's not uh, so when people see my image, they just feels. I hope they feels like. It's getting moving or something like that. Yeah, your your whole the whole even though you have at face value the character just standing there, there's nothing stiff about this. The whole image feels like it's in motion on on a subtle several subtle levels. So how do you work to to really put that all into effect? Uh, well, I it's just matter of experimenting. I think it's just experiment. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if it. It, it if it works in my uh, in my brain uh, it, it just works it's just something like that because I really don't have uh, any rule uh, uh, as long as I think the image works uh, and it and it work as I intended so I hope mm-hmm. the viewers see it too awesome and as we mentioned this was about uh, you know 80 minutes long do you what do you feel is the difference for you between taking something like this at you know not you know an hour and a half to maybe like a, an eight to ten hour image is it is it just a matter of difference in detail do you, do you usually try to push the material basically if you were gonna spend five more hours on this if you were to ever do that what would you change or add to it uh, if if I spend more time on it maybe I'll just uh, make yeah define the every material better for instance mm-hmm. like the the mask the clothes and the samurai or maybe i'll just come up comes up with different background ideas because i think i make this background too much in my illustration so <laughs> i have to think to think another way but as long as uh, as long as in this state is already readable the addition hours from it is just matter of uh, detailing and detailing and improving yeah. Yeah. So I think you know, as some closing thoughts here before we go today, getting your shapes to read, I think, is far more important than jumping in. Of course, fussing with details and and getting uh, particular with materials. I always find it's a very secondary thing. But if you can work yes, out, definitely. here is the shapes. Here are the values of those shapes. And in this case, here are the color of those shapes on a color image. Then the rest of it kind of falls into place from there. Yes, that's right. That's right. Because. People, uh, people don't really see colors. They just see values and shapes. Uh, that's why people with blind colors still can measure the depth because they can see the values. Like that. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on with me today. And hopefully, if if anybody has any other questions for Fami here or any of your process, leave them below. We'll we'll try to get uh, back to those questions as soon as we can. Uh, of course, in the, the Brush Sauce community, I, I posted this ahead of time so people could ask us some of the questions that I talked about today. So join up if, if you haven't yet. And yeah, take care. And thank you, of course, again for coming on. Thank you for helping me, Tyler. All right, his works, links are in the description. Before, be sure to follow and check him out. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.